Morning, guys. 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day. We're Signal Centre talking ball. I'm Joe Neighbour, joined by Steve O'Hare. Morning, Steve. Top of the morning to you. Got my green shirt on today. That's nice. I'd like to see that, Joe. Yes. I've got my green pants, my lucky. (laughs) Quarter Irish roots. Get in there. See, I knew there was something I liked about you. (laughs) Yeah, it's the ginger beard. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. You can't hide it. They take you somehow. Irish skin uh, and ginger beard. Yeah, I mean, yeah. left left its mark on me. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's nice to know. Um, yeah, so w- what's going on in the markets? Um, well, a bit of a U-turn on the vaccine front. Um, obviously, we've been talking about this AstraZeneca situation for the last few days, and uh, the debate appears to be edging towards its end. We've got the European Medicines Agency set to deliver its verdict on Thursday, but yesterday reiterated its view that the benefits of the shot far out outweigh the risks. So it looks like we're going to get France and Italy's leaders both signalling a U-turn on the issue uh, and hinting that they will be willing to allow the shot again based on the regulator's final view. Uh, That actually comes on the back of France considering a weekend lockdown restriction in Paris uh, this weekend to contain the virus. So clearly still not on top uh, of the the cases at the moment. Um, Beyond that, The main event for today really is going to be central banks, uh, specifically Jerome Powell, and he will be defending his ultra easy monetary policy outlook amid rising inflation fears. So the Treasury bears will be watching that closely. Uh, And we've also got the European Central Bank policymaker Peter Casimir saying that the region's governments are rolling out stimulus too slowly. So we've got the ECB on Thursday. Um, And then we've got the Bank of Japan later in the week. Um, So plenty going on. And uh, certainly the Japanese don't appear to be taking their foot off the stimulus accelerator at the moment. So expecting uh, a continuation of the theme uh, in uh, in Japan as well. Uh, We've got some uh, congressional hearings today over the short selling squeezes that took place as a result of the Reddit um, meme stock bits and pieces that were going on that comes as GameStop uh, GameStop sank for a second consecutive day, leaving it on pace for its worst two days in more than a month. I mean, that really is kind of a a boom or bust scenario with that stock at the moment. You know, it's... um, What did it move down to? uh, Let's have a quick look at the chart, shall we? So this is the daily chart on GameStop. So you can see this massive rise here that was created by the short selling, then a massive dump. Uh, and then a decent rise again, coming up just shy of the highs. But I mean, you know, if you look at and, and break down into some sort of, I've got a log scale chart on this, but if you look at the percentage moves on these things, it's it's pretty insane. So just from that swing high there down to um, the lows that we saw yes in yesterday's session, we're talking about a 50% <laughs> pullback, right. which is obviously not insignificant. And uh, anyone buying you know, up here as there definitely would have been because they're expecting it to go to, you know, probably a thousand, um, <laughs> you know, they're already uh, 50% down, which means they need to double their money to get back to where they were. So it's, um, yeah. yeah, it's, uh, it's not, a certainly not something I'll be getting involved in anytime soon. I don't think. No, but it, I mean, the chart doesn't look too bad if you're looking at it, just a, a quick scan of it. So that's on a log scale. What's it on a normal, uh, normalized? So, I yeah, mean, you know, you even that, is, mm, on. I, mean, I just, I just sort of think it doesn't look bad, considering that the the owners, when it first started, they talked about a, um, it's you know, the most it's worth is twenty dollars, <laughs> and you're sort of trading a huge premium to that, and obviously that there is there's great potential now because the amount of investment they could um, investment into the cap- of capital into the business they can do by just issuing more shares or whatever is massive. So um, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, that story is definitely not uh, finished and has got a lot more to play out, but uh, you know, I mean, I don't know what the gaming world is like so much these days in terms of where the potential money is to be made, but I know, you know, from, what my son gets up to on playing Fortnite all the time, but you buy, you know, you download that game particularly is free. Yeah. Um, and obviously all the add-ons and bits and pieces go directly to the company because you download it from Epic Games. So I don't yes, know okay. how game retailers 
you know, it's going to work for them going forward. You know, just well, I think it's. I, I mean, level. yeah, I mean, it's it's a case of basically you'll have the, you know, everyone likes to go, still likes to go to stores or uh, go to the high street. You know, I don't think that's ever going to completely go away. Uh, but then, if you've got enough capital that you can raise from an episode like this and then invest it into the online uh, scenario the digital scenario then um, you can have different revenue streams then uh, and yeah. so you you can you can catch up with all the competition uh, i think that's where gamestop really lagged behind and had the real big sell off and uh, was looking really sick at one point uh, because it didn't keep up now it's got the potential to keep up so the, i mean the, at know, any it's point like worth what it's worth at the moment though right are we agreeing on that uh, yeah it's it's yeah but sort of like i suppose it's like everything if you look at all this sort of like technology stocks they're not what worth that right now no. uh, it's all about potential future earnings so um what why not yeah exactly i, I mean looking at that that the trend line comes in at line between 30 and 40 dollars i mean for me it's sort of it feels like value there because uh, you know, especially if they they're raising capital ar around these levels now, uh, it comes back. They can sort of like they've got the money to spend. Yeah. So um, let me know. Yeah, it's I, there. I, there might be yeah exactly. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 there's no way I'd be getting involved at these uh, he heighty levels. Um, heighty is a new sort of technical. I like that. Word. Yeah, um, heighty. <laughs> and and yeah, the, no, no way I'd buy, buy up at these levels. But uh, I think there is still potential upside. I you know, hate it when people say, oh, I'm going to sell it at $1,000 because it's just a big round number with lots yeah. of noughts on the end. Uh, you know, there's, there's got to be more effort put in on the analysis side of things to sort of like work out where it's going. Technically, it's still got to go another 400% to get there. Yeah, but technically that doesn't look beyond the realms of possibility. I know we've had this sort of, if you look at it, you've had the impulsive move up to the highs, you've had the correction lower, and maybe this is the second leg of a correction, and then down to the trend line, and then uh, extending further higher. So uh, still a little way to see. Yeah, exactly like that. Moon. Yeah, why not? Um, <laughs> it, it's, not it's, it's like not anything coming. nowadays. No, no. I'll, I'm. Uh, yeah, definitely not not for me either, but uh, uh, I wouldn't write it off. Okay, so um, I guess we can have a quick look at AstraZeneca as well while we're here, just because it's a, a stock in the news. Obviously, we don't tend to generally focus on stocks too much, but um, that's obviously found some support around here. I think I was looking at this maybe from a potential wedge perspective and looking for yeah. a breakout. I think if that happens, then we could see a bit of a continuation higher on that. I mean, overall... AstraZeneca is a super defensive stock um, mm. with a magnificent track record um, of producing decent returns for investors. I mean, this is the monthly chart. So, you know, you'd think based on that, that this pullback, if you're a long term investor, is a pretty good opportunity to get on board for yeah. more of the same. Over. Volumes picked up slightly as well by the looks of things. Yeah, you can see that down there. So, yeah. Uh, for UK investors with ISA season approaching, that looks like a pretty decent one to tuck away, I think, for the longer term. Um, nice. Okay, let's move on to um, indices and commodities, Steve. Um, obviously, uh, trading a little bit mixed ahead of the FOMC, which I think most people are seeing as a sort of a pivotal event in the week. Uh, anything that you can decipher from the charts or anything of interest? Um, well, I've analysed, uh, sort of like did a video on um, oil this morning. Um, uh, news really on oil is the oil bears and bulls grapple as market puzzles over pandemic exit. So it's really a case of, you know, um, sitting a little bit mid range at the moment. Uh, where are we going to go next? Uh, obviously, the main question. Um, but that's on an hourly chart. I think if we go back to the weekly chart and remind ourselves what we're dealing with at the moment, we've broken through the really uh, strong downward uh, trending resistance line and uh, we're testing these horizontal levels and failing at the moment so 66 uh, 53 and 65 21 were two levels that we had swing highs at um, obviously a major one back at 76 80 uh, we're not anywhere near yet um, but we've um, and that even that would be just above there is the, the 79 30 which is a 50 percent retracement of the whole down move um but yeah we're still we're we're playing about with these levels we're in a slightly sideways corrective phase i think there's a little bit more to play out on this uh the last sort of three days of negative price action 
leading into a fourth today as we're speaking. On the, I missed the four hour chart out, go jump straight to the hourly chart to get an intraday picture of this. And uh, Ichimoku Cloud, you can see prices have uh, tripped above, tripped below uh, over the sort of like, well, since, uh, since the sort of like 8th of March. So in the last week, we've just gone a bit sideways. Um, and we formed a very small candle here, this like uh, seven o'clock to eight o'clock is a, a sort of bearish engulfing of the previous candle. And uh, that was coming at uh, Ichibuku Cloud Resistance and we've sort of extended lower this morning. Uh, the levels to watch on an intraday basis, support coming in at 63.83, which is the swing low yesterday. And um, the, the main probably support level on an intraday basis is down at 63.07. Uh, resistance comes in at 66.41. Again, swing high yesterday and above that, We've got the 8th of March uh, high early in the morning, two o'clock at 67.80. So very mid range, wouldn't really be looking to do anything slightly bearish, maybe looking for the swing low to retest the support uh, because obviously the weekly chart is, is uh, you know, showing them negative, that negative price action. Um, go, hopping across to gold, uh, I think we're still in this bearish channel. Uh, we're, we're seeing signs of bo bottoming out potentially of last week's positive price action. We made a, a new swing low, uh, but reacted quite positively from there and, and finished the week at 17.26, which was a nice surprise. F finishing above the $1,700 level, um, didn't really get to test the 16.60 level, stalled at 16.77. Uh, but I think this is a maybe a bullish flag formation where we're in the um, in the throes of this uh, extension higher. We've had the impulsive wave up, correction lower, and then looking to go again. We go again. Um, that's like a sort of trendy young term that they people use nowadays, Joe. Just in case you didn't know, it's a we, we've had a on the daily chart. We've had a bullish engulfing. Um, uh, well, you could call it a bullish outside candle here. Uh, on the 9th of March, and we've extended higher, but just stalling ever so slightly. Uh, that the real levels that I see as uh, resistance coming in. Actually, what is that? That's a minute chart. Now that's uh, that's I didn't mean to do that's that. That's a bit obviously. aggressive. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't look at minute charts that much. Um, <laughs> only when I'm sort of trying to move a stop, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're sort of in this corrective channel. Um, you can see this sort of like formation that we formed in verse head and shoulders. So really, for me, uh, a break above the neckline. Did I draw that on or did I not? So that neckline coming in at 1740, it's, it's the level we've talked about. Uh, for me, it, it poked its head above it um, yesterday. Uh, I think we're looking at buy a break of there on the intraday chart. Uh, and I, I like it because it's a head and, inverse head and shoulders formation. And um, but then we run straight into resistance smack bang at 1750. Again, round number, psychological level. Um, so I, I am mildly positive on gold. I've been trying to buy it on the talking pool this week. Uh, haven't fared too badly. Uh, seem to be run out of time. And um, we had a bit of a poke up yesterday. I thought, here we go. We're on our way to 1750. And it turned into a nasty looking shooting star candle and reverse lower. Didn't stop me out, but I, I think I ended the day pretty flat on that. Um, so that's that on the gold. And moving on to the indices. Uh, again, indices sort of holding the FTSE, holding below this resistance level at 68.12. Again, uh, brushed it yesterday, 68.14. Um, didn't manage to stay above it. And on the back foot this morning, uh, start, and again, looking at the four hour chart, we sort of like see this continuation pattern, uh, which we still think there is potential on the upside. Um, you know, maybe sort of like a little bit of a sell off on the dollar mile there. Um, on the DAX, on the weekly chart, we have this expanding wedge, and we can see the sort of like the fantastic rally we've had since last year. Uh, we had the correction halfway through, and it's extending higher. The uh, this trend line up here, 
comes in at 15,000. That's not a bad number to target. Big round number. We all like round numbers until we don't. And then um, we've got this uh, short term trend line, supportive trend line, potential trend line here. Uh, that comes in today at around about 14,000. We're trading at 14,600. Very much if we'll get down there today. Uh, on the hourly chart, uh, where you can see this sideways price action, bit of a uh, well, I suppose we can get we can sort of like see this real line in the sand. What's the high there? 14,605. So, uh, really, a break of these levels. And uh, we should see a fast extension, fast move higher. So uh, I like tax at the moment, and maybe buying a break higher. Um, the Dow, again, sort of like uh, played with the um, all-time highs yesterday. Uh, this is a hanging man candle uh, from the 15th from two days ago. Yesterday, similar sort of candle, but very small. You can see the momentum maybe is stalling a little bit are we due a possible correction if we bring this extend this um, top of the this wedge formation higher we're trading above it so maybe it's going to pull back into here you can see a little bit better now the momentum is stalling uh, on the nasdaq a little bit more under pressure uh, and really looking for um really selling into rallies the, the the level to really watch in nasdaq is around about the 13,350 uh looking to sell rallies there tight stop on that and um, this just looks like a corrective move lower um slightly positive uh, momentum but that's finished off yesterday with the shooting star which doesn't look too clever so uh slightly negative on the Nasdaq and the S&P trying to sort of like get up to 4,000 level, uh, but failing. Uh, yesterday we got up to 39,000 at uh, 3,980, which is the all-time high. Uh, nice one, but uh, back to 39, uh, 3,960. So failing at the moment, and you can see the sort of like the, the extent of this rally since the uh, pandemic lows. So that's about it on the indices as well. Hope Thank you. That's helped. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, okay, let's have a look at the FX side of things, then, shall we? So, uh, pretty much as always, going to have a look at dollar index because that seems to be the driving force behind all market moves uh, in the FX world at the moment. And the view hasn't changed from my perspective in that we've seen a breakout of this wedge on the daily chart and we're in the process of completing some sort of bottom formation. So, we've got the rounding formation that's taken shape here over a number of weeks. We see the breakout above 9160, uh, potentially forming a bit of a flag on the pullback and now looking for a continuation higher. So we've seen so far three consecutive closed days of gains on the dollar index and today we are higher again. Um, obviously, if we start taking out the highs of yesterday, then we can then start looking for a retest of this resistance up here at 92.50. Obviously, we've got a lot going on with regards to the US today, particularly with the FOMC. Uh, and there is a, a number of data points out as well uh, throughout the day that could impact things uh, quite significantly. So very much keeping an eye on the dollar today. Um, looking at euro dollar, uh, well, that's obviously the inverse of, uh, of dollar index, as we've said many times. We saw the break of this bullish channel. We saw the retest of the channel up here in a failure with a big old shooting star candle. Uh, and then we saw the break of this support here at 1948. Bit of a retest, maybe a bit of a flag in there as well. Um, but I think we're looking at lower prices towards uh, sort of 116.95 maybe even as deep as 114.93 uh, on that one. So it, I guess the next level to target on Euro, uh, Euro dollar would be this level here, which is the 118.35 level. Um, if we look at cable, a um, bit of a mixed session for that yesterday, but ended up on the front foot. I mean, uh, early doors, we saw Sterling get a bit of a, a bashing. Um, but if we compare this to the US dollar, it's still trading in this bullish trend. We had this wedge breakout. Maybe this was a bit of a retest of that. Um, I've got a key level of support here at 37.60. I think while we remain above that, we can still say that we're within this bullish channel and we can expect higher prices on uh, on cable in the short term. 
Um, I did have some charts drawn. Uh, I know this looks a bit messy, but let me just hide all these if I can. Uh, okay, I'll just, hide, I'll just remove them. But what I was thinking I was seeing here was maybe an inverse head and shoulders on the intraday charts. So if we go that left shoulder, then we've got the neckline, the head, uh, potential uh, for the neckline, the right shoulder. Keep an eye on that. So I think if we see a break above here, which is uh, 1.4005, then potentially there is a head and shoulders uh, formation and obviously with the trend being higher that would be a continuation pattern I think uh, and in terms of targets on the upside we can look for something around uh, that kind of level up there just, just above 142.00 which comes in line with this sort of swing high uh, that we saw back in February. The right shoulder uh, itself looks like uh, inverse head and shoulders as well. Yeah so maybe you know if you zoom in if we go to your one minute charts we might be able to see that <laughs> even uh, <laughs> if a more granular, uh, maybe something like that, maybe. I was going inside. I was going to go left shoulder. The, the sort of there. like, uh, no, um, the left shoulder's quite. The, the left shoulder I was picking was quite close to the head. Oh, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you sort of like took it down to there. Yeah. Yeah, that's see minute charts coming handy. And they do, don't they? Look, that's had a lovely little retest. Maybe now yeah, is the time to I buy like that. that for a move up there. Yeah, guns at the head. Okay, uh, right. So, anything else I've seen on these charts that looks of interest? Dollar CAD, um, I thought was quite interesting because it's broken through that key support there at twenty four sixty eight. Um, so, despite us being reasonably bullish on dollar CAD, uh, sorry, in the dollar in the short term, uh, it's uh, still losing ground to the Canadian dollar. Uh, although the volumes look like they're slipping off a little bit on this move to the downside, so maybe a bit of divergence there, uh, which may offer the potential of a bit of a, a bounce back on that in the very short term. If we look at dollar Swiss, well, the Swiss currency and the Japanese yen, despite being classed as sort of semi safe havens, I guess they continue to look pretty rubbish really against everything so um, this is uh, dollar swiss potentially a flag forming here uh, a breakout above these sort of levels around 92 well say 93 double o then i think we can look for a continuation higher on that one uh, again i would note that the volumes have been dipping off uh, on this sort of corrective move so if we see the volumes improve on a break higher then obviously we'll have that additional bit of confirmation finally looking at dollar yen this is the market that we've mentioned a few times now because it's at such a huge and pivotal downtrend resistance line um, and it continues to find resistance around these 109 20 ish levels we've seen a now a few attempts at trying to overcome it but keeps slamming into this trend line so a bit of indecision yesterday the volumes dropping off has it got the legs to push through or will we see the japanese yen sort of return as a bit of a safe haven obviously a lot's going to depend on what the central banks do this week japan have been ultra loose with their monetary policy so if they continue to adopt that stance then I think, you know, they've got the power to uh, continue devalue, devaluing the currency and um, we may see that eventually break to the upside. Uh, that's pretty much it on the currency side from me. Um, Steve, unless you'd notice. Have you got your, did you show us your sort of like lines, the lines chart? I like that one. Line chart? Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah this one. Yeah. I thought I'd give you a break from this one today. No, I quite I'm like it. About it. Um, so yeah canadian dollar uh pushing higher obviously linked to price of commodities commodities pushing higher with uh, a higher inflation environment so that's obviously quite healthy for that dollar index is up there as well but you know just under uh, performing compared to the canadian dollars we saw with that break to new lows british pound sort of middling uh, as to is the aussie uh, dollar and the new zealand dollar um, which have been obviously pretty strong as people have looked for these riskier assets. And again, there's that commodity link as well. I guess quite interesting down here, um, Japanese yen, that turquoise line, which keeps making um, new lows. But we've maybe got the Swiss franc trying to have a little bit of a go here, yeah. um, which, uh, you know, would indicate that maybe there is a bit of a shift ongoing or a rotation to uh, some of these so-called safe haven assets i don't know what mm. safe haven is these days this sort of <laughs> meaning seems to have lost uh, uh to, to have been lost but 
if we get a break above these highs that we posted on the 11th of March with the Swiss franc, then maybe that could lead to a bit of a corrective move higher in the short term. Yeah, cool. Okay, so gun to the head trades from yesterday. Steve, you were flat, I think, on yeah. your gold trade at the close. So there was, a, I think, a tiny, tiny loss on that. Yeah, yeah. 0.04R. Uh, I was stopped out. So you're holding up one end for me at the moment while I'm trying to give it all back. So hopefully we can pick a decent uh, couple of winners between us. Overall, you know, we continue to flatline, really. Uh, obviously, there's only two trades now, whereas before there was three. Um, so that is going to make it a little bit harder for us to uh, to kick on. Um, have you got Unless a trade we idea? Up the ante. We up the ante. We sort of like start putting more on our trades. Start doubling uh, the. Well, we could put one and a half percent risk on our trades, couldn't we? Maybe. Well, that we could do. I don't still know, risking three percent of the game. Yeah. Um, well, I'll do that when we start winning because at the moment it will just exacerbate the losses on the downside. So uh, yeah. <laughs> do what we do that. is we'll see if we've won on the day, then we'll sort of like reverse engineer it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hindsight trading. Um, um, okay. What you got? The idea actually was, Joe, that I was going to catch you, you up, not yeah. you catch me up. So, no. you know, I'm sort of like, all I have to do is just get a flat trade and I, I think I'll, I'll catch you quite quickly. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, certainly in a bit of a drawdown at the moment. That's the blue line. So, you know, can't catch a, a break at the minute. I'm sure I'm going to turn the corner very soon, but you're uh, you're helping me out. Yeah, I've just got uh, sort of like previous swing high that I'm concerned about. You've just got a break about. above that, yeah. <laughs> bit of resistance there back from October. Uh, you got an idea for us? I have, and it is sort of like a bit of a flip of the coin. Aren't uh, they all? But yeah, well, some more than others, I think. Um, I'm going to go with gold again today. I, I've sort of keep hammering at this uh but i do need some weakness in that dollar don't know whether i'm going to get it uh but i'm i'm sort of like pleasantly surprised how well gold has held up um obviously we're sort of jumping in here i'd rather buy a dip uh so i'm going to sort of like make the top uh, make the top make the stop a bit tighter uh bring the stop in to uh 1730 so pretty tight stop we're trading at 1734.7 and, and really, um, I don't know, target wise, uh, I've really, I can't go above. Let's go there. I can't really go above 1750 because I think that will be just a natural magnet and probably get a little bit of resistance there. That's a 3.19 to 1. So I'm targeting 1749.7. The stop is at. Uh, 1729.7 3 to 1 uh and uh, we're getting in at 1734.7 so a really tight stop uh, just on an intraday basis hoping to catch uh need a little bit of luck for that really we all need a little bit of luck now and again uh, okay i think steve this might work. day so i'll yeah. probably get it won't i luck of the irish absolutely uh i you did my work for me steve i'm going to have a look at cable um I sort of made a reasonable case for it, I think. So looking first up at the daily chart, we've got this bullish trend channel. So this breakout of this wedge, maybe a continuation higher, decent looking uh, hammer candle formed yesterday. So uh, if we look at the intraday charts, maybe a couple of cases for some inverse head and shoulders, certainly got a bigger one playing out here on the hourly. But as Steve's eagle eye pointed out, there may be an even smaller one going on on a shorter term time frame. I like this candle here that we posted at 6 a.m. A uh, bit of a Marabuzu candle. So we dip back to around about 50% of that. Um, so that could be a reasonable point to enter the market now. So I'm going to buy it. Currently at 138.96. I'm going to target a move up to the neckline-ish of this potential head and shoulders, which comes in at 1.4000 on the nose. And let's go with a stop loss below that candle that I just referred to. Um, putting that at 138.71. So targeting a decent looking 4.16R on that today. That's Ooh. my trade of the day. So, I mean, <clears throat> certainly going to get, uh, I would have thought either, you know, probably going to get stopped or t hit the target one way or the other because we have got quite a bit of info and uh, economic data out today. We've got <clears throat> Eurozone CPI at 10. Price is expected to rise 0.9% year on year. We've then got the Canadian CPI data at uh 12 30 again clocks have changed in the us not yet in the european 
time zone, so everything is an hour nor uh, an hour before it normally is. We've got U.S. crude inventories at 3:30. Then we've got the FOMC rate decision, which is usually at seven, but this week it'll be at 6 p.m. So don't get caught off guard if you've got any positions open on U.S. indices or U.S. dollar crosses. Um, no change in policy expected with that, but given obviously the recent focus on yields and inflation, we can expect the Fed to provide some comment on these issues. Um, anything else that you'd like to add, Steve, before we wrap it up for the day? No, just looking forward to my pint of Guinness later. Absolutely. I'm I'm uh, considering making an Irish stew for dinner and washing it down with a, a nice, oh, nice pint of Guinness. I do, yeah. I mean, obviously making the Irish stew with Guinness as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, lovely. Like yeah. it. I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah. Send brilliant. you a picture. Send me the recipe. Yeah, I will do. Yeah, that would probably be a better <laughs> idea, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great Cheers. day. Back tomorrow. Bye bye. All right, mate. Cheers.